We're, oh, welcome, welcome. We're on. Hi, everybody. We are going to sew tonight. This is so much fun. I would say be in your pajamas, and I hope you are, but, you know, since I was, like, actually doing this top, I figured I at least should wear the top. So I made a couple tops today. It was really fun. I was practicing to make sure that I knew what I was doing so I could lead you in at least knowing what I was doing. But tonight we're going to do 129 asymmetrical striped front tie top. And I actually made it the pattern of the month. And I did that because um, it would save you a little bit of money. And we thought maybe we might give that little difference to Toys for Tots. You know, just maybe. This is all about the children tonight. Everybody's donating their time. Um, the goal, you know, one thing we know about children is you don't get to choose your parents. <laughs> no matter how old you get, you don't get to choose your parents. And for some of us, that works out really well. And for some of us, it didn't work out too well. And so one thing we can do is we can give children at this time of year, we can give them toys. I'm really a strong believer that toys give them hope. And so our goal tonight is to raise as much money as we can. 100% of it will go to Toys for Tots. And we're going to wrap it, we'll, we'll, we just started today, we'll go through Friday, we'll wrap it up Friday so that they'll have plenty of time for the different holidays, Hanukkah, Christmas, you know, to get those toys in for the children. Um, if you go to the Silhouette Pattern website, the very front page it says Toys for Tots, that will take you to Fit to Stitch. Fit to Stitch is a nonprofit, so you can write off the donations. I know in years past you have not because you've given it to Silhouette Patterns. Silhouette Patterns not being a nonprofit, you couldn't write it off, but this year you can. And so we, I saw some very nice donations coming in today, and thank you, all of you, so much. You know it's not for us. We're just passing it along, so we want to say thanks, though. Okay, so the goal and the reason this pattern came up is I've been in workshops, and I've gotten more questions about this pattern, that it's confusing. And um, we want to make sure it's not confusing to you. So hopefully you all are behind your sewing machines. I'm behind mine. Um... We're just going to have some fun. That is the goal. And any questions, we're going to try to answer all the questions as long as they're, you know, applicable to what we're doing. We're going to try to answer any questions you have. I've made up a couple tops. We'll show you some uh, some of those later as we switch camera angles. It takes a little bit of time to switch camera angles, so we'll just kind of show them when we're there. Okay. Um, the one I have on, I made up. I'm going to mention a few fabrics before we start. Um, you choose your pattern, you choose your size, you know to choose your size by, same as the sweater set, it's a negative, a little bit of a negative ease that you might want. It's up to you. You want a fabric that will tie nicely. Um, and you can kind of test that by tying the fabric before you start. I want to give out some fabric uh, numbers just so that you can get an idea as to what I thought. We've got a lot of fabrics that work really well. We just put up S several new fabrics, all of them would do well. Um, I wanted to introduce a couple concepts to you, and that is using stripes, obviously, which is what's on the front, but also using different fabrics, a combination of fabrics, and then using a woven with a knit. So the one I have on is a combination of a woven and a knit. The woven is fabric number uh, 2896, and the knit is 2897. And I'm giving you all this for reference so that you can really see what I'm talking about is you read descriptions of the fabric. The one I made up on the mannequin, we'll show you a little bit later, is $27.97. Um, the fabric I'm using tonight is $27.98. It's a distressed black. The reason I'm using this fabric is it's actually white on the back side, and I'm using black thread, so you'll be able to see the stitching very easily. There's also a couple others that I wrote down I thought would be really great. $27.96, $27.91. There's some ribbing out there that is you know, it would work really well because you could take that ribbon and put it all different directions. Anyway, I just wanted to kind of give you some ideas um, to go with. I've got a Teflon foot on. I always use a Teflon foot when I sew, so for me this is nothing different. I have a stitch length on my machine, 3.5. I have no, just a straight stitch, regular needle. I use these, um, I mean we sell them, these ball needles. I'm sorry, orange needles. Let's say I have a little container in here. These little orange needles, I use the same needle for everything. Um, usually once in a while it'll break and I change it when it breaks. Um, my thread is just regular, nothing fancy thread. I'm using a black. 
again, 3.5. What I will say is I've, as I've taught classes and, you know, sewn on plenty of different sewing machines, it's interesting to me. You would think that that 3.5 would be universal because that 3.5 actually is, is millimeter. It has a, a meaning to it, but it's not. Um, I've noticed some 3.5s are very short together and some 3.5s are much longer. The goal is to be able to take and, you know, give some stretch once it's stitched and not have those um, stitches pop. If your stitch is too small, then you, you won't have any give on your fabric. It will, it will break. So be sure that it's long enough that when you go to stretch a knit over your hand or something like that, the, the stitch doesn't pop. Okay, that's really the only requirement. Okay, so let's just go over a couple questions before we start, we'll answer. When we're sewing, I really guys want you guys to try to focus on the sewing so that your, your mind isn't wandering all over and thinking of questions, all right? Um, can you stand up and show the top? Yeah, I can. We, um, can I stand, I didn't finish the end of that question, sorry. Sorry, can you stand up and show the top? Yes, the camera will not go up as fast as I do, so we'll see if that works, does that work? Can they see it? Okay, all right, and where do you find the fabric numbers on the fabric? It's right in the description, right where it says description, and you'll have a fabric number right there. Will you ever sell the sewing tables that go with your machines again? Um, you know, I don't know, you guys. We had a, a business disagreement that I felt like they owed me additional, well, I didn't feel like they did. They owed me additional monies that they did not pay, so it's hard to back a company that didn't fulfill their contract. Um, there's no, it's no reason to do anything legal or, you know, we just, I just didn't feel like they honored their end of the stick, so it's hard to support them. I do think they make a great product. Right now I'm looking into a company from Australia that does a table, and um, we're going to see what we can come up with with that. I think they're wonderful. I do think they're wonderful. Um, we're looking into doing them possibly on our own, but it's going to take us a little bit of time to do that. But please don't not buy one, you know, if you feel like you need one. Um, I'm just... I can't back them, I can't support them. And I'm sorry, I'm really sorry to say that. All right, any other questions before we get started? Okay, all right, so then um, let's get started. We're gonna start, I'm literally gonna follow the guide sheets. I'm just gonna go right along and follow the guide sheets. I have cut it all out, you know, and you know what I've done, you guys? I literally am sewing like I sew, I'm barefooted. <laughs> I'm in my sewing room, this is literally how I do it. I put my stuff here, and I put my guide sheet here, and I go from there. Okay, so this pattern, the only change I made is that because it's um, fall, winter, this particular pattern to me is more springy because it has that bell sleeve, and so instead of doing the bell sleeve, I did, I used the sleeve from my sweater set 195. So it's just a straight sleeve. That's the only change I made. Everything else I did exactly as the pattern is. So the front has three pieces and it's just to get some design on the front. We're gonna construct the front. We're gonna sew it to the back. The back is all one piece. Uh, we're going to put the neckband on and that is optional, you don't have to do a neck man, but I thought since it's part of the pattern, I think it's a really good way to show it. We're gonna make it. And then we're gonna set in a sleeve and finish it up, that's it. So that front has three parts, and as it has three parts, we're gonna go over those three parts. If there's ever a pattern that needs markings, this is the pattern. And because I feel like when we're communicating, I'm communicating with you through the notches, I just notch the bejesus out of this thing. There are so many notches on this thing, it's ridiculous. Um, I don't think you need all of them. I, I used all of them tonight because again, I'm showing, you know, I'm, I'm sewing for you guys. Okay, so when you cut this out, uh, again, because there's three pieces that make up that front, it's asymmetrical, it's just got all kinds of things going on. I, I just love this pattern. Um, when you lay it down, you only, the three front pieces, you only cut one of each piece and you have to cut it up. And there's a arrow or grain line on each piece so that you put that piece in the direction of the arrow. So you don't obviously have to follow that if you're using fabric that wouldn't apply to it, 
but I think it's really fun if you are. So the first piece I'm going to just right here for a second, just because it was on top when I actually pulled it out, is um, piece number two. And it just has a portion down at the bottom that's pleated, and I'm just pleating that. It's actually on the back of the of the, the second page of the guide sheet. I told you I was following the guide sheet and then I, I didn't. Just I can put that piece down if I just stitch this little area. So basically I'm just stitching this pleat closed. We're gonna have a drawing here a little bit. We've got a pattern that we're going to give away. All right, that's that piece. Um, again, let's start at the front. We'll start at the ties. There's two ties that are gonna come together. And so this is piece number, doesn't matter which one you do first, piece number three. It's called the bottom left front. And because the long section is a tie, you're gonna fold it and you're gonna stitch that tie first. All right, here we go. You guys know I've long told you that I really felt strongly that you could make a top faster than you could run to the mall, try them on, and get home. And so we'll see how we do tonight. Three eighths of the seam allowance all the way down to the base. And then you want to stitch the ends and you're going to over stitch them. And then there's a little bit of, and when I ever do to it, and instead of back stitching, because it's kind of hard to back stitch, I just stitch it again. So you've really got two rows of stitching there. Um, and you don't need to cut anything because it's all going to be on the inside. But then what you're going to do is you're going to fold and fold, the directions are really clear on this. You're gonna reach in because you're gonna turn it to the other side. Again, this is piece number three. Now, when I go up to grab this, let me just kind of show you what I do. I've got it folded and I've got my fingers are holding that fold. I'm gonna take my thumb, I'm gonna hold that and I'm gonna turn it to the inside. The minute you turn it to the inside, it will kind of hold itself in place. And then come over to the other corner. This one's already gonna hold itself in place. Fold it, and because it's gonna kinda of overlap a little bit, fold it back so that it will form a nice little point. And then again, because you're already on the inside, go ahead and wrap that corner also. And it really turns out nice. And that way you can do them both, both edges at the same time, and when you pull them out, you can see that you can get nice sharp points on both of them. All right. Easy enough. If it doesn't turn all the way out, don't take scissors and poke it up. You're much better off to just use a pin and just put it in and pull it up. Or you can kind of use your fingers and you can see that I can get that nice sharp point. You just couldn't get a better point. It's really pretty. And both corners. All right, so that's going to be the tie there. That's the first tie. And so we'll just kind of put that to the side and we'll do the other one. And the other one is the big front piece that comes down. And this one's got all kinds of markings. This is actually, this is the weirdest looking piece ever. This is piece number one, it's called the right front. And you can see again that it's got this long tie thing that comes out. So that's going to be folded in half. Be sure you got the right piece, right place. And there's notches on here that I always mark. It's a double notch because those double notches are going to come together. And that's where you're going to sew. You can start there and there. It doesn't make any difference. But you don't sew any farther than that. You just start stitching there and sew to the end. You guys holler at me if I should be answering questions. Do you sell wholesale? We only sell wholesale to our 
either our spiffies or our PBS sponsors. Those are the two people. Uh, our most important concern is that someone who buys the pattern has success with the pattern. We don't really want to sell patterns just to sell patterns. We want to see people be successful with those patterns. So we have a spiffy workshop. It's like a, a fitting workshop. It's in August of every year. And our PBS stores like both fabrics. We can sell to them. You know, they're very aware of what we do, and most people who are buying from Vogue know of us, so they'll turn to us for help. So that's the goal. The goal to the goal is to really just support education, to be honest. Okay, do you need any additional fabric for the sleeve to make it long? No. The, because, no, if you're switching out the sleeve is the question, because the bell sleeve takes up so much width that the um, the long sleeve takes up the same amount as the back. You, lay, you can lay them out next to each other and it works really well. All right, so I'm gonna fold again and fold again. I think you all understand this folding. We use it on a lot of our patterns and it really is uh, very easy to do. When I have stopped stitching at this, uh, this double notch here, I'm actually going to clip it and I'm going to clip it right into the stitching and I'll show you why in a minute. You want that portion is going to invert itself and you want it to come up so you can grab it in stitching that's going to take place next here. Okay, so I'm going to reach all the way up here. You guys, there's some cold places throughout this country. Like it's seven degrees tomorrow here. I hope y'all are warm and home and comfortable. I am so grateful that it's not really yucky weather here and I'm sorry if you're in one of those places that's yucky. Okay, so again, poke it to the inside and then just before you invert the whole thing, just go over to the other side and hold that and invert that. And that way you'll have both of the ends done. When you bring them out the other side, they both look really good at the same time. You don't have actually have to hold them all the way out as long as you turn them against each other, they'll they'll stay put. And that is just amazing. It's the greatest little trick. I learned it dozen, I don't know, more than a dozen years ago. I learned it a long time ago. And it was my wonderful lady who taught me and then all we gotta do is pass it along. All right, so there's the next tie. So now we've got our two ties done. And that is the front page. And we're gonna turn on to the back page. Fit question, I lower the darts on 95 by cutting across the pattern above the bust and adding two inches. You should never ever do that. I didn't hear that. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, I do not shorten. Do I add two inches the same on this pattern? No, you do not need to change the dart positioning on, these pa on this pattern at all. It's all built into those seams. Don't even worry about it, okay? Okay, um, so then the back page, I'm gonna go to the second page of the directions. And I'm going to go to where I did, it's piece number two. The very first thing you did is you sewed the little uh, pleat at the bottom. And I already did that. And basically what that does is that gives some little fullness to the front. And that there's actually a dart built into there. So that, that's why I say there's no need to shorten or lengthen or do anything. Um, okay, so then I'm going to go back to piece number one, which is this piece here. And it's the front. And what we're going to do is, um, this is where the notches are really helpful. I think I'm going to refer to this actual tissue page. There's a double notch here, a double notch here, and a double notch over here. So we've already, we've already folded these two together. This is probably the trickiest part. If there's such a thing as a tricky part, it's a tricky part. When I have inverted this, remember I told you to clip it? When you clip it, you're gonna have, you're gonna, it's gonna form a nice little square edge there, a, a, a right, a right angle, because where you place that clip, so you're gonna sew right at the base of that and leave off the tie, but leave everything else, connect everything else to the top portion. So these two triple notches have been put together, and it's gonna go along. I want to make sure you see this. I want to make sure you understand it. Okay, so here's the piece that it comes from the top of me. comes up here. There's the tie. 
and then here there's a triple piece on there too. The photo actually shows it really well. It's just that some people just don't do it. So rather than looking at it and just staring at it, actually do it. And so what I did is I actually drew each step. So there you can see that the all the three triple notches are together now. They're double notches, I'm sorry, but there's three of them. The three double notches are together and I'm gonna put a pin there to keep them together. And then there's two layers there and there's notches telling you where to bring that together. And then it comes like that. So you can see that it leaves the tail out, the tie. And there that is. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew the piece onto this. So all of this aligns like so. And so right here between this section right here, we're sewing piece number two onto piece number one. For this little bit right here between my two pins, and you can actually see it in the photo, you can see there's three little pins there. There's three layers. And that's the tie, the two layers of the tie and then the bottom layer and it's this top portion is folded over to meet there that's it has everybody got that i want to make sure everybody's got that okay and we're just going to sew this piece number two bam just like that it's pretty simple if you know minus three degrees in ontario oh i'm so sorry Oh my goodness gracious. I hope you all have really good heaters. That would be the key. Is to have a really good heater. So then I'm going to lay this on top just so you can kind of see how it's going to go together. And notice the stripes are going this way. The stripes are going this way. Stripe, this, this top in stripes is just fun. It is fun to do it in different fabrics, but it's fun to do it in stripes just as the pattern says. So I'm going to do it just as you guys should do it, just as if it was the first time I've done it. Because I actually know this is going to work, but if you don't, I would suggest you pin it first, like I'm doing, and then sew it on the sewing machine, not surge it. I surged it. But again, that's when you make it the second time. For the first time, pin it and sew it, because you're not sure. Okay, so I'm just coming down here. And you can see it's just going long and then bam, I reach the, the three layers. But that's nothing different. I just pick them all up and just keep going. This piece number two is notched. So you can know exactly where you get to the place. And then I come to the little pleats and the little pleats just gonna sew right in. And again, it's notched. So like I said, you guys, I notched the heck out of this thing because you guys like notches. Now, I mean, notches are really important when you're trying to communicate. And so if you follow those notches, they'll really help you. Um, if you're sewing a knit to a woven or even a knit to a knit, if you have extra, just make another little pleat because it'll just give you a little fullness through the bust. Don't stretch it to fit. Just make another little pleat. And it'll give you a little more fullness and it'll look really good. Okay. All right, I think we're ready to sew. All right, how are we doing? What's the pattern number? 129 is the pattern number. It was new for spring, you guys. We should never have it as a POM, but like I said, I wanted to prompt you all to, you know, save a little bit and give to the kids. Toys for Tots. Okay, so I'm doing um, three eighths. Sewing these two together. So I am late. What is being sewn? Uh, 
It's our POM for the month. It is 129. Remember the name. It's called the Asymmetrical Striped Front Tie Top. But you don't have to have it striped. The one I have on, that's what we're sewing. You guys, this is going to be our last Monday night webcast. We're not going to do Monday nights anymore. We're going to do Tuesday nights. So starting in January of 2020, we are going to do Tuesday nights. And it's so that we can watch Dancing with the Stars. Not really. <laughs> Just Mondays get crazy. So Tuesday's going to work really so much better for us, and we're excited. So you guys have to change your work schedule. You've got to change everything so that you can see us on Tuesdays, not Monday. And we'll post that first day. This is our last Monday night for this year, but we'll post the first Tuesday of next year on the site. All right, so I... I sewed that again with the machine just to make sure that it was all good. So if I pick it up, you can see that it's going to make the front. There it is. There's my neck edge. And you can see the ties kind of coming out of here. That's exactly what I want. It's looking perfect. So now that it's looking so good and that it's all right, Got loose threads coming through there. I'm going to go ahead and serge it because I want my finished top to be serged. Again, you guys, when you do this, you know, second time, I would just serge it all the way. All right, so I'm going to do that. Actually, I, mi I skipped, I missed a little part here. I, I really, this is my top, so I want it to be right. Um, where the three layers have come together, one slipped out. And the raw edge is showing, so I don't want that to happen on the inside. So I'm just going to clip that thread, pull it back up, and then I can just serge it. Yeah, just right there at the very base of that. All right, there we go. I really like this fabric, and I really like this top, and I want a new top. Okay, there we go. That's better. And now we'll look. Yeah, that's much better. Okay. All right. Peggy, can you show us the whole piece before you sew and after you sew? Yeah, I think I am. Am I? Here. Here's the whole piece. See, there's extra here, which is what you want when it's on the body. That gets taken up. And then let me show you from the inside. You might be able to see better. See, so I sewed from over here around there and you're sewing piece number two to piece number one it just kind of got some slanty stuff along the way that's all it's really easy to do just keep in mind when you fold it and how you fold it Sure you don't run over pins. So piece number one and piece number two are together. Got it? Okay, so you see this hole right over here? That's where the other tie is going to go. And one thing nice about serging it is you all can see it's always really pretty on the inside. And that's really nice. There's a loose thread there, but it's always really pretty on the inside. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to add piece number three. And that's going to go right here. And so piece number three is the one we made the tie with in the first place. And it's the one we set aside. So this is a little tricky. Again, 
I'm going to show you so you'll understand. And I think once you see it, it's pretty easy. So you've got this tie out. And the biggest thing, you know, when I do directions, I'm pretty detailed on those directions for the most part. So I want you to look at these directions. If you notice when this piece number three comes in, and I, I notched everything A, B, and C, so you can see all this. But I want you to notice which way the tie is going, like it's this part, the longer part is down. That's because that's the way it goes. And so if you realize that's the way it goes, I think you'll have a little easier time sewing it on. So when you look at the tie, it's this portion right here that's going to sew onto the top. Just as if you placed it right on top like that, but you're gonna peel it back now to sew. And you're gonna sew this portion, and you can see it's right there in the picture. But the only thing you might do is you might not know which way to put it, and so again, if you notice which way the tie is going, the tie is going the correct way. Or be sure the tie is going the correct way, I guess is the way to say it. All right, so I'm gonna sew this portion to this portion. And again, this is something to me that if you haven't sewn before, you're gonna join these two seams together. So the seam that you just did, and then the seam that, and just take the seam allowance and either go up or down with it, it doesn't make a difference. And the seam that was the under part of the tie, the bottom part of the tie, those two are coming together. And the rest of it just goes together. So let's, oh here, do you wanna see, this is what it's gonna look like before. And then we'll show you after. So see there, there's just those two seams coming together. And it's kind of like this side of the tie will be the side seam. And this side of the tie is the hem. So if you go to the middle, inside of that, that's what's being sewn to that V area. And that's at the bottom of the second column on the back side of the page. And again, I'm going to sew it and then I'll serge it. When you come to where the seams intersect, because you have um, the tie is open, just sew right over the opening of the seam and just stitch it open. Just literally stitch it to that seam. And then you can change directions. I always put pins in my mouth, you guys. I can't do that here. Can't put pins in my mouth on top. Of and just sew it the other way. All right, so there we go. Tell me if you need to see something. Okay, so there it is, and you can see right there, I sewed right through the seam being open to the middle, and then just kept going. So the tie is now connected to the top. And one reason I like to do it is because it's, some of this, some of this sewing is a little bit precise. It doesn't have to be. If it's not exactly on, it's on the underside of the tie, and no one will ever see. Um, but it's a little harder to get precision on the serger. So now I can just serge it and know that it's sewn correctly. All right. You guys, we're going to have a giveaway tonight. All right, and here's the front now. I'm just going to hold this up because what you're going to see is these two ties are ready to be tied. Isn't that cool? So we've got the front all made. Yay. All right, we'll talk about how to tie it in just a minute. So we've got the front done. 
So the next thing you're gonna do, oh, let's have a let's have a drawing. How much fabric for the top you are wearing? I did one yard of this piece here, and I turned this piece on the bias, just an FYI. I just gave it a little bit of rotation. Um, it was going to be secured on every side by a knit, so I figured it could stay, it could handle the bias, and it'd give a little bit of uh, movement. And so I just turned, tweaked it just a little bit. So I used a yard. You know, you'll need a yard for that. And then um, I just did two yards for the rest of the the wine color. I just saw a thread. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so we're going to sew the back on and let's do the neck edge. That's the sleeve. So now we're at the um, top of, we're at the middle of the third where we're doing the shoulder seams. Oh, the giveaway. Yes. I'm sorry. Let's do a giveaway. So you guys, you know, we have this, um, Tomorrow is Giving Tuesday. We're going to hit you up for all this stuff again Tuesday. But tomorrow's Giving Tuesday, and um, we have that PBS, the, the PBS drive going. And it's two patterns. If you give $30, it's two patterns. And um, so there was a lady who did not want one of the patterns because she already had it. So we're going to give it away because she said, why don't you give it away? So we're going to do just that. So it's pattern 314. And it's just cute. I did a, I did a video a week or so ago with both of them. They're both really cute, very versatile. Great for, great for all kinds of stuff. 314, Abby's. And um, we're going to give you a code. And then if you'll, this is only for live, only for people watching live, you guys. If you put the code in, the computer will choose who it is while I sew the shoulder seams. So the code is PBS, just three letters. It doesn't matter if it's caps or lowercase, just PBS. And so we're gonna... Um just something that's really exciting. We had done a goal on to see how many patterns we would sell, it's how many patterns we ordered, and we're over halfway there. So we've done, I feel like we've done really well. We still need your help, but I'm thrilled at, at how much support we've gotten for the show. So thank you, thank you, thank you. So the two patterns, if you haven't gotten them, you can still do it. You can go to the Fit to Stitch site. It says donate. Just click on the donate and the two patterns are there so you can see them. So now we actually have the front to the back. Isn't that cool? Yay, it's actually looking like a shirt. So I'm a big believer that the minute you make a neck, you should finish the neckline. Because I've seen in many cases where we either sew aggressively or we handle the top just aggressively and we ruin the neck edge. The neck edge is almost always just bias. So the shoulder seams are pushed to the back, which is what I was doing. And then I've got the neckband and let's sew the neckband now. I didn't cut the neckband any differently than what the pattern is. But if you noticed, it has a stripe right down the middle so that if I sew that um, accurately, that, that stripe, the white stripe will be right at the top of the neckband. So just a little bit of thinking there. You certainly could do it on a bias. Uh, knits do not have a grain line, therefore they don't have a bias. What I mean by bias is that the stripe is literally on the bias, so it, it creates a little, almost like a candy cane look. I like it, but on this case, I was just going to do it straight. So I just sewed together in a circle, and then I'm going to fold it in half to make the neck band. The, there's one seam and that seam is going to go on the left hand side, the left hand shoulder seam. I'm going to go around just to make sure it's straight and just put a few little pins all the way around. Do we have a winner yet? So everybody put PBS into there. Give you a few minutes and then we'll pull up a winner. We like giving things away you guys, it's kind of fun. And I think you like getting them. So far, everyone, everything we've given away, people have actually sent us emails for them, you know, to be sent to them. And we've sent them. 
We really do appreciate you watching. We really appreciate your support. It's post Thanksgiving. Time goes so fast. I just hard to believe it's post Thanksgiving. Okay, so I just um, pinned that all the way around. Then I'm going to quarter it. So I've got the seam here at the top. You just go to the bottom. And what I do is I'll. This is not nothing rocket science. I just use a different color pen and I put the pen in from the raw edge to the cut edge so that I know that's my quarter pin. All right, then I'm going to fold it this way and I'm going to put a pin in this way. So my white pins are telling me the quarters and the rest of the pins are just holding it in place. And we have a winner. Oh, good. Um, Karen H. Karen, you won. Congratulations. That's a pattern for you. We'll take care of the pattern. We'll take care of the shipping. If you'll just send us your, send me, Peggy at SilhouettePatterns.com. Send me your mailing information and I will make sure it goes out to you tomorrow. Okay. All right. So the, this is already quartered. You can see the little white pins are going to tell me where the quarter is. Now, um, remember that the seam goes to the left hand shoulder always ready to wear always puts the seam at the left hand shoulder so I always I remember years ago looking at t-shirts that people had on knowing they made them at home because they put the seam at center back the seam does not go at center back the seam goes at the left hand shoulder I don't know why I could probably come up with some reason and find out but I never have okay so then so I put that first point and then just quarter the neckline. So forget where the other shoulder seam is. It doesn't matter because it's all one piece. So I put one pin there. Then I put the two together. And then you put the other pin at the quarter seams. Are you guys sewing along with me? Because we'll all wear our tops tomorrow. I don't know where we're going. I've got several appointments, but... I'll wear my new top. I'll wear yours. I'll wear mine if you wear yours. How's that? Okay. Okay, so now I've got the neckline quartered and I've got the band on. So I'm going to work up here so that you can see. Now you're just going to take and match the band, the whites and the white pins. And I know that it will be equally you know, eased all the way around. So we're going to go there first. That's my first one. There's my second one. My first one's, my first one's actually already done because I did. <laughs> Is there a question over there? I'm ignoring these guys are making faces at me. Do you ever need to use a strip of stabilizer at the shoulders? I don't. I can't say it hurts, but you know, if your shoulder won't stay stable, then the whole garment won't stay stable. I, I would think if you're going to stabilize the shoulder, if you're worried that your fabric's not stable, you really have to kind of stabilize the whole entire garment. To me, it doesn't make sense to stabilize one seam, not the others, but you guys know that's me. Okay, so here you are, and you're going to kind of just pull each seam, you know, pull each section gingerly until they just align up. And they give each other exactly what you need. Now, you could sew this and then stitch it. I'm just going to go right to the serger. But if you're not sure, you guys, your sewing machine, it gives you more accurate placement. So don't be afraid to do it on the sewing machine first and then go to the serger. You don't have to do it on the serger first. I'm going all out and I'm going to go to the serger first. The key I think on this is just to making sure you've already quartered it. You've already got it sewn on correctly. It's just making sure all of your edges are even. Because you've got three edges. You've got your neck edge that's folded in half. And you're going to stretch that evenly and then you're going to sew it evenly. And as long as you do that, you're in good shape. And I think I'm ready to go. I think I've got the whole thing pinned on. It's just that easy. This makes a really pretty neck edge. So let's go. Let's just do it to it. 
I think every workshop I've ever had, people tell me, don't put pins in my mouth. I still put pins in my mouth. So I really like this band on a, on a neckline. I think it's just really professional. I think it looks really nice. So let me hold it up and show it to you. And you can see just as I plan how, see there's just a little white uh, line all the way ac around the neck edge and it just lays beautifully. Typically I would iron this, just but the iron's a little bit hard to get to. And I, I've got to iron here in a minute. So I'm just gonna let it go for right now the very next step it's the bottom of the third column you're gonna see an under it's a it's a top stitching i'm sorry it's not under stitching but what it is and i usually press it first but i don't need to um, my teflon foot has little tiny kind of forks out, coming out from it and i use two of those to determine you're just going to stitch this. What I'm doing is I'm stitching the seam allowance down under to the neck edge. So it just looks so pretty and so professional. Obviously it stabilizes everything. So I'm just going to stitch the seam down to the body of the garment. And my needle thread. So we're just going to re-thread here. But can they see that? It's so pretty. You see it a lot on t-shirts. You see it a lot on everything. It just looks really nice coming around there. Let me re-thread my machine. Not sure what happened here. Oh, since you're using a serger, what type of stitch are you using on the sewing machine? It's a straight stitch. My thread must have split. Something that I was doing, it didn't like it. So I just cut my thread and I'm starting over. I don't know that I've ever had that happen before, so. It's the first time for everything. Any tips on lengthening the top? Um, I would probably make it first. Because part of that piece number three is the side is the is the side and part of the bottom so i would probably at least make a muslin so that you really got a handle on the understanding the the top and the parts of the top and then just add to the bottom it's very easy to do um, but if you don't understand the parts it might be a little confusing you wouldn't change two you would change one three and then the back. Are you still selling that sewing table? I'm not. I'm not, you guys. You can get them, but I don't sell them. Are you using a three thread serge seam? No, I'm using a four. Because uh, three thread is usually for finishing. I'm actually uh, sewing and finishing at the same time. A four thread is 
an extra story at all. This looks so pretty. I really do believe anybody can do this. This is not hard. Just steps. All right, there we go. So I've gone all the way around. I'm just gonna cut my threads. When I finish, I go, I overstitch just a little bit. So then I can cut my stitch. It's almost like a back stitch because I've overstitched the beginning. And there shouldn't be any threads here. Anything that's there is is gonna get cut because it's all been secured. All right. Um, how much shorter is the band compared to the neckline? I don't know off the top of my head, you guys. Um, I just cut it exactly like the pattern, but I don't know. But you could measure the neckline, measure the band, and figure it out. I just don't know off the top of my head to tell you. Sorry about that. Okay. Look how good that looks, you guys. Just lays so nice, and it's even, and just perfect. And the line is exactly where I wanted it. It just it looks black almost, but there's just a little bit of the white peeking through. Is your neck edge on the top or the bottom as you as your surgeon? <laughs> as you surge. It doesn't matter. Top, bottom, it doesn't make any difference. Um, if you have a stripe on your neckband, I'd probably put the neckband to where you could see that you were stitching straight. Why aren't you using a stretch stitch? Because I don't believe in all that stuff. I hate to say that. I don't need a stretch stitch. A, a stretch stitch has like a little jag to it. I, I don't need that. So you can do whatever you want. It's your top. Remember your top you get to choose. But I don't need it. I don't even want it. Okay? Okay. Are we good? All right, so we're ready to put on sleeves. We've got two sleeves to put on. It's getting so cute. And when I do a sleeve, we're on the last column. I'm going to um, take and fold the sleeve in half because the fronts and backs are the same in most cases. If it's not, um, all I'm going to do right here is I'm just marking the top of the sleeve because I'm going to serge this in and I want to know at least when I get halfway to the shoulder seam, that the shoulder seam and this dot are, at, you know, are meeting. So the first thing I do before I put in the sleeves is I just serge the hem. And I don't know why I do that now. I just, just, just a habit of sewing. going to surge in the sleeves. If you're not sure of the sleeves again, go ahead and stitch them and then surge them. But I've done about, I don't know, a few sleeves in my time, so I'm just going to go ahead and surge them in. Um, I think the main thing when you do sleeves is just um, keep the edges even and you want to put the sleeve down. So I'm going to put right sides together. Start at one side. I'm going to put that sleeve side down against the feed dogs. The bottom is always going to have a little more pull than the top. And I'm going to, I what I do is I line up the shoulder seam and the dot. That gives me a roughly about how much I need to watch and keep those seams even as they're going in. Just keep them straight. Once you can see that I'm on course, take your pins out and then keep going. I don't know, you can put a sleeve in pretty fast. And I'll show you how to press these here in just a second. my 
sleeve. It's gorgeous. Yay. And then my other sleeve here. So I go ahead and I put both in and then I'll go to the iron and just show you a few things that I would press and then we'll finish it up. How are we doing on time? Oh, I'm late. It's supposed to only take me an hour and I'm, I'm at an hour. Should we answer questions? In the top you're wearing, did you change the pattern 129 neckline to the neckline? No, I made no changes to the one I have on. No changes. I only changed the fabric. But remember, this can be woven and I, it doesn't. you don't have to change the neckline. This is the exact same neckline that's on 129. Do you use a stretch needle? I do not use a stretch needle. How do you have a stretch needle? Does that mean it stretches? <laughs> I'm kidding. Nope, I use the same needle. We sell them on the site. In fact, you know what? I think they're still on sale because we haven't taken the Black Friday prices off. We need to, we need to get that done. But I think the needles are on sale. There's like a hundred needles for, I don't know, 20, not a lot. All right, so again, make sure your pins come together. Make sure your edges here are even. Once you can see that your pin and the top of the sleeve are coming together and that you're matching, I just do that because I want to have some marks. It's like the neck edge where I corded it, you know, half, do the half of the sleeve. And that way, if you're off, I want to know I'm off before I, you know, finish the whole thing. So that's what that helps me. And then go all the way to the end. Put the edges together. My sleeve is on the bottom. I'm taking a 3 inch and seam allowance. And y'all, if you are afraid of sleeves, I mean, I don't know who's watching and who's chatting, but everyone, every place I go, <clears throat> you know, women say to me over and over, your sleeves are the easiest thing ever. Your sleeves are the easiest thing ever. They're the easiest things ever, okay? So this is just a great time to, and a place to pick up on that. Okay, so now we're going to go to the ironing board because we really can't go any farther. The sleeves need to be pressed, so we're going to switch over here. All right, and I'm going to lay this seam side up. And you're going to press, I press the sleeve, the seam into the body. And just do it on the inside enough to get them going that direction. And then just turn it this way. And as you pull the sleeve down, the seams will go that way. And then since I have it here, I might as well press the neck edge. The neck edge looks so good. And then I'm going to press the other sleeve. This is a great fabric. It's, I don't know, it's got a little bit of brushing to it. I'm not sure what it is. I'm sure it has a description of it on the, on the site, but it's nice. So again, just take the, the seams. And just push them up. And then as you pull it down, the seams will go into the body. Alright. And so now we're ready to finish. And we're going to start by doing the sleeves and the side seams. I've already finished the bottoms. So we're just going to take it like so and start, and I do that whole thing on the serger. And I'm crazy for cutting my serger tails. So it's a bad habit, guys. I cut them before I get them out. Keep your edges even. And then I've, 
got my two seams here so that you make sure you your underarm seams come together. And then I always kind of look ahead a little bit with your side seams and just put, line them up at the bottom and then just tug them just to where they're the same. Sometimes cutting, sewing, just different things will give a few differences and when you uh, line them up, they just give you an even amount of color. one. I'm going to go monkey arms and do the other side. I have really long arms. That is the one thing I always change about the pattern is I add length on the sleeves. I, I'm always adding length on the sleeves. I kind of chuckle to myself when I'm in workshops and women are saying, why are these sleeves so long? And I'm adding to the length of the sleeves. But anyway... <laughs> Again, just make sure your underarm seams are together. That's kind of the alignment point. I always sew from the bottom of the sleeve up because your seams are going into the body and it'll automatically, you know, your seams will be the right, the, it's a little easier. Your seams are going to correct. Them. surge around the bottom and do about, usually on the bottom I do about a one inch pound. serger. We can actually turn the serger off because we did all of our serger work. There's um, sometimes people will ask me what what makes you decide to put a hem in or not a hem in. For me the hem on the, the bottom I always have to have a hem. I just the bottom of the shirt curls up and it drives me crazy. A lot of times on the sleeves I won't do a hem and that this one has and it doesn't bother me as much but if you're not going to hem it don't serge it. Just leave it raw, and a lot of a lot of knits will actually just curl at the bottom, and that's a cute, you know, it's cute, it's a cute look. But it just depends on whether you want, I don't know, a more a little hip style, or whether you are wanting something. This is so cute, my new top. All right, so when you go to when you go to tie, I'm going to show you this. I'm sure y'all know this, but just as a as a general rule. So here's the tie. This one comes in a little bit higher. So put that one on top and just fold it over. And then because this one's on top again, use it and it'll give you a nice knot. Okay, it's just that easy. And I'm gonna, I wanna look at this one here for just a second. And I just, ha just hem the bottom, just turn up the bottom. You guys don't need to see me hem it, do you? Um, do your stripes match at the side seams? They do because the way I laid it out, I put the bottom together. So you can see on this one they do. But again, I put this, just put the bottom pieces together and they'll come all the way across. Is the stretch stitch not needed because as you said with the walking, the walker foot, walking foot I think you meant. Okay, so 
you don't need a stretch stitch you guys I think it's just um, I think it's over the years uh, we don't know how to sew on knits the sewing machine companies gave us a um, are we on yeah the sewing machine companies gave us a, a stitch that just we didn't need I'm not sure why I, I don't know but there's no commercial machines out there just think about what they're sewing with at the industry and the industry has lots of beautiful clothing coming out and there's nothing in the industry where a stretch stitch is used and the commercial machines don't even have a stretch stitch so sometimes when you get this information think massive think global and you, I think you'll start to realize that it just doesn't make a lot of sense okay hopefully that'll help you did you pre-wash your fabric I did in this case and in this case and in this case threw it in the washer in fact I washed them all together threw it in the washer threw it in the dryer and I went from there um, I want to go to this top for just a minute just because again you can see the, t the tie here where this tie is on top it comes over and then this is the tie that you want to tie over and then you'll have a nice little uh, kind of little cover portion for that knot all right and then the band again you can kind of place your lines on the band where you want it if you're worried about using a stripe then go um, at a 45 degree angle and you'll get like I said that little candy cane effect or you can always use a solid you don't have to use the stripe what you want to do whenever you're sewing is pare it down to the level of what you feel like you can do I think these stripes are really easy because what I did is I cut actually along the stripes so to cut it is really easy and then if you just use all your edges together and sew it I think you'll find that that's really easy also okay we're good what questions can I answer this was fun, and I got a new top, you guys. Thanks. Um, any questions that we can answer for you? Did you use a straight stitch? Yes. So at the beginning, I mentioned uh, my needle, my straight stitch, the length. Just go back to the beginning, and you'll see that. Did you use a straight stitch instead of the zigzag because you did serge this? No. I used a straight stitch simply. Even if I wasn't going to surge, I would only use a straight stitch, period. That's it. The only reason I did the straight stitch first is because if you're not sure of the stitch and you do it on a serger, it's a lot of work to undo it. So when I'm trying to do precise and if I'm not sure and for you guys kind of, I just did the straight stitch first and then I did it again with the serger. But one had nothing to do with another. Okay. All right. What kind of iron is that? This is a Rowenta. It gives you a, a facial when you're up here, when you're up here uh, <laughs> ironing for a long time and you feel dehydrated, just give yourself a facial. No, I love this thing. Couple, this is a Rowenta. And if you go to the best place to find it is if you go to Bed Bath & Beyond, it's kind of the purple one. I don't know a model number. I've given it away to a thousand people who have asked, but I don't remember it. Um, what I like about it is Rowentas are notorious for leaking and there's no water in the, physical, in the physical iron. You pull up the water with your finger right here and that's where the, the water is in the tank. And so it's just, I think it's wonderful. The sole plate is titanium. I mean, I could go on and on. I love that thing. If, if you get a coupon, they're probably about $200. Um, Bed Bath & Beyond always has coupons, so don't go in without a coupon. And you can order online, you can do all that stuff. They're great. I mean, that's my, that's my baby. That iron is my baby. Um, why do you use 3 8 with instead of 5 8 um, 5 8 is archaic. Five, why do you use 5 8 I'd have to throw that question back at you. Only reason you use 5 8 is because that's within the patterns, but when you take a concave and a convex line, and you, you add seam allowance to them, those two lines are supposed to go together. Those two lines can't get together because the seam allowances bind them up when you use a 5 8 So, no, I would never use a 5 8 I haven't used 5 8 though for 30 years. Again, ask yourself, why do you use 5 8 And usually the answers are because the patterns tell me to. And that's probably not a good reason. 
No webinars till January. No webinars till January. The crew is going on vacation. We're going to Hawaii. No, we're not really. But anyway, we could. Um, we've just got lots behind the scenes to do in January. We know you all are busy. It, I think it gives you all a chance to go back and watch all of the stuff that we put out through the year and just go back and watch it and just... Um, you know, there's lots probably you missed. <laughs> so it gives you a chance in the month of December to sit back, relax, and uh, review. How about that? It's our holiday break. School is out. Anything else? Are we good? All right, so then don't forget, it's for the kids. Toys for Tots. If you guys can think about donating, we'll send out a reminder email. Get on our email list. I have so many women who say to me, I'll get an email and said, you didn't tell us. And I'm like, it's in the email, but they're not on the email list, and so they don't get the information. Black books are $149. Elastic, get your rolls of elastic. They're 50 bucks. We had an order today where a lady ordered 10 yards of elastic. She paid $4 a yard for it, and she, ordered two, she paid $80 rather than buy the roll. So she's clearly not on our email list because... <laughs> She paid twice as much as she should have because all the prices are in the cart. So go back over, black specials are still up on the front page. Go over those specials. Make sure you don't need anything because they're, the prices are going away for another year. Okay, <laughs> just to make sure. But anyway, again, thanks to all of you for being here. For Brett and Benjamin behind the scenes, thanks guys. Appreciate it. And we will see you, I think it's called next year. We will do the Thursday nights. We'll still do the Thursday night YouTubes. There's so many holiday ideas I've gotten. I realize the holidays are going to be over by the time you see all these, but we'll save them for next year. But anyway, there's so many cute things out there. I can't, uh, it's too fun to show you. All right, so other than that, you guys have a wonderful holiday season. We love you. We really appreciate you here at Silhouette Patterns, and we'll see you in January. Bye.